The Avengers vs. The Peter Factor by Midnight Wolf 2192 Chapter 8 Steve When Steve first met Peter, he didn't meet Peter, he met Spider-Man. During that meeting, he threw an airport boarding tunnel on the hero, so it probably wasn't the most stellar first impression. The second time Steve met Spider-Man was during an incident in Times Square. The Avengers had been called to intervene when giant lizards began emerging from the sewers. Clint, have you found out where these things are coming from? Steve called into the comms as he slammed his shield into another lizard. The team seemed to be fighting for two hours, but this seemed to never stop. Negative cap, just from the sewers. Clint's reply was strained, and from where Cap was, he could see the man firing arrow after arrow at high speed. We need to find their central exit point and close it. Nat's voice was also strained as she spoke. I think I can help there. A new voice came over the comms, and the team all turned their heads as Spider-Man grabbed one lizard and webbed another to the ground. What have you got for us? Tony asked, and Steve would try to keep his composure. Since the, he and the others had returned, Tony had refused to even look at him, let alone speak. When he'd been forced to communicate, Tony's words were short and sharp, and so icy Steve could feel shivers running down his spine. But with this person, Tony almost seemed to sound warm and fond. Tony landed off Steve's left, near where Spider-Man had come to a stop. I found where they're coming from and I know who's doing this, Spider-Man said and as he and Tony dodged one of the lizards. Can you take us there? Steve asked and Spider-Man looked over at him. Steve felt overly scrutinised as the other hero looked him up and down before turning his gaze back to Tony. The man behind this is Dr. Kurt Connors, former Oscorp scientist. Spider-Man continued speaking as though he hadn't heard Steve. Sources say he was fired from Oscorp three months ago after some ethical issues regarding his research. Do you know where these things are coming from? Brody asked and Spider-Man nodded. They are all emerging from a central junction about four blocks over. These lizards here are on the ground are the last ones. Spider-Man replied and Tony turned sharply to him. And how do you know that? Tony demanded and the other superhero shrugged. As Tony continued to stare him down, Steve watched as the figure shrunk back slightly. I may have just come from there and I may or may not have just had a teensy tiny altercation with Dr. Connors and he may or may not have been in full lizard form when this happened, Spider-Man said quickly, and Steve watched as Tony's faceplate blew up. So you're telling me you took on a genetically enhanced lizard by yourself and you didn't think to call for backup? Tony demanded and Spider-Man's head dropped. See these greys? You are the main cause of them. Fry ran a scan on the spider brat. T Steve couldn't hear the AI's response, but he watched as Spider-Man's body language changed. Steve couldn't tell much about what the other person was feeling due to the mask, but he could see his body language be was beginning to resemble that of an exasperated child. Tony ignored the protests and continued to have Friday check him over. So we just have to manage these ones. What about this Dr. Connors? Steve asked, drawing the attention of the other two. Contained, Spider-Man said firmly, almost coldly, and Steve frowned. Surely the kid... He was young during the Germany fight, that much Steve knew for sure. Couldn't still be mad about the boarding tunnel. I webbed him up and once the antidote spreads through his system, and the NYPD will come and take him into custody. All right, spider brat. Fry says you have some minor injuries, but your healing's taking care of that. Tony interrupted and Spider-Man turned back to the other man. Head straight to the tower and I will meet you there in my lab for a debrief. My intern is probably there too, so if that's the case, don't scare him. He can be quite jumpy. Gotcha, boss. Spider-Man replied cheekily. He gave a quick two-fingered salute before firing a web and swinging away. Steve turned to ask Tony about the other hero, but before he could open his mouth, Tony's faceplate dropped back down, and the man shot it back up into the sky. When the team had returned to Stark Tower, Tony and told Rhodey to take notes for him in the debrief, before he disappeared down to his private lab. And once again, Steve could only feel immense guilt as Tony disappeared from view. Steve first met Peter as a hyperactive blur that rushed into the common room and had thrown down a folder at his best friend. Before Steve could question the kid, Bucky jumped out of his seat and pulled the kid into a tight hug. Uh, Bucky? Steve asked after a few minutes. Bucky pulled away from the teen and Steve noticed he was wiping a few tears from his eyes. The kid looked over at him and... Steve could have sworn a flash of anger crossed the kid's eyes. Who's this? Right, Stevie, this is Peter. Pete, this is my best bud, Steve. Peter here is Stark's intern. 
Bucky explained, and the kid nodded at Steve. His face, however, soon became bright red as Bucky be continued to speak. He is insanely smart. He's completely redesigned my arm, and according to these notes, will soon have an upgrade for me. Wow, was all Steve could say. The boy continued to look down at the floor, but Steve could tell he was proud of himself. That's a truly kind thing to do for, for you to do, son. You must be really brilliant. I'm just average, Mr. Captain America, PSA Rogers, sir. Peter replied, and while Steve raised an eyebrow at him, Bucky blew him away with a loud bark of laughter that emerged from him. Wait, wait, Bucky said before, between deep, hearty laughs. PSA? <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> oh, you don't know, Peter said, and Steve watched as the boy raised his head. There was an almost malicious twinkle in his eyes as he looked up at Bucky. Oh, Lord, I can't believe this. Steve said. He put his coffee and tablet down on the table and felt himself blush scarlet. Do they still show those? Of course they do. Bucky, Steve, Peter replied, his voice being drowned out slightly by Bucky's laughter. Peter then went, turned to the former assassin and smirked. Want to see? Ignoring Steve's protest, but Peter and Bucky were pulled into the living room and asked Friday to turn on the TV. Steve followed them in slowly and could only watch in horror as Friday began to put up a playlist of all his rapping with cap videos. After the first one, an almost hysterical Bucky sent a message to Natasha and told her to get to the common room ASAP. The spy in question walked into the room and it was only because of years of knowing her that Steve realised she was preparing for a hostile threat. But she obviously hadn't been preparing to see Bucky and a teenager sitting on the lounge while Steve was in an armchair blushing bright red. Nat, this is... Steve started to say, but Peter jumped to his feet and interrupted the statement. Bucky stopped laughing and both men were stunned as the teenager walked over to Nat and wrapped his arms around her. What surprised them more was the fact that Nat didn't pull out a knife. Instead, she leant down and kissed the boy on the head. Hey, Pete, Nat said as the pair broke apart. Why does Cap resemble a tomato? What have I missed? As Nat and Peter climbed back into the lounge and the torturer's video started again, Steve could almost pretend things were back to normal. He could almost imagine Tony was with them and was teasing him just as much as the others. Twenty minutes later, Friday's voice echoed throughout the floor, causing the group to jump. Forgive me for interrupting, Friday said. Boss is requesting the presence of the whiz kid. He says, if you went up to show off, surely you're done by now. Peter jumped to his feet and after grabbing his folder and saying goodbye to the adults, bolted out of the room and into the elevator. Steve watched the excitable team go with a fond smile.